So today I'm connecting with John Holland, the best-selling author, radio show host, and one of the top psychic mediums and spiritual teachers in the world. We're going to be diving deep into the power of the soul, tapping into our own inner guidance and wisdom, and activating our spiritual gifts. John, I'm so excited to connect with you today. Thank you for being here. Uh, my pleasure. Anytime I can have a chance to talk about the soul, it, uh, um, I'll take it. So thank you. Yes, we hold our audience and got lots of questions beforehand so Good. lots that we want to cover today so we're going to dive right in you know there's been really an explosion of interest in the 21st century and especially in recent years around spirituality metaphysic metaphysics self self-help and you've really been an early pioneer in this movement so it must be really exciting to see sort of the world catching up with you well somebody said that to me they said john do you realize when it comes to the work you're doing in mediumship or so that you're a pioneer and i went oh i sound old um you know <laughs> but i i guess i am I, I mean i started in 2003 so i mean if someone can take my work and uh they're learning from it and making their life better then i'll be that pioneer or i'll be one of those pioneers so i'm okay with that yeah, I want to start off and really ask you more about your journey because I think it's so fascinating. I mean, did you come into the world knowing that you had these spiritual gifts or was it something that you started to become more aware of over time? Well, you know, um, my first book was called Born Knowing and Emily, I really believe that um, I think I was born this way. Um, you know, if people believe in past lives, um, I think I've done this before because I'm one of five kids and you're from Mass, you know, you're from New England and Irish, Italian, Catholic for myself. And I was always the different one in the family. The one, as a kid, I was drawn to metaphysical subjects, psychic ability, ghost, spirit, religion, um, uh, magic, uh, chemistry, um, science. So I, I was born, you know, my other two brothers, I'm one of five kids, and my brothers would be out playing football or baseball, and I'd be there reading books on these subjects. And also, a lot of people uh, who are, I find that they're born uh, with a, just an awareness um, of spirituality or spiritual abilities, um, have very creative abilities too. So besides being um, all those interests that I had, um, I also was really good at art and creativity and drawing and sketching. So I think, the right side of my brain, which is the intuitive side, was stronger than the left. And then you know what happens, Emily, when kids start going to school, we pull away from the right side and we go to logic because we right. go to school. And so we push away those uh, abilities or, um, yeah, we, we just push them away or life because we have to start school and just you start taking math, spelling. I think life pushes our, the intuitive side away never never leaves you but i think they push it pushes it down and you start listening to uh logic so i was born this way yep yeah so i totally agree with you i think we're sort of conditioned and sure. programmed to go more into like the linear way of thinking and a lot of times you know if kids aren't really nurtured to explore and activate those gifts right. and maybe they'll su suppress them and go sort of in a different direction. So I know from, from just, you know, hearing your story and reading your work that a Kundalini awakening after a car accident was one of, you know, an instance that- I think that's what it was. I mean, uh, after the car accident, and then it, years later I realized, I kept saying that the accident caused it. You know what really happened though? I really believe this is, the accident gave me a chance to get my life together. I was living in LA as a young man, uh, you know, very fast life, two jobs, and I wasn't taking care of what, what I should be. And I, your soul, since we're talking about it, like your show, your soul gives you signs and, and symbols and, you know, different ways to say, go this way. I wasn't going that way. I was going the young man, you know, uh, party stage, uh, living in LA. But I think after that accident on that rainy night, it gave me a chance to get my life together. I really looked at the relationship that I was in for six years that was really not, it wasn't working, uh, what I was doing and um, I started getting more into spirituality and then soon after, a, I keep thinking it was, uh, I did feel energy though after mm -hmm. the accident. I did feel it opening, but I yeah. think the awakening really awoke, uh, I think that accident awoke what should have been been worked on a long time ago, or I guess everything happens when it's supposed to. But the uh, when I got my life together and started focusing back on me 
okay, instead of all the people around me, that's when I think the abilities uh, really exploded. Yeah. So you're talking about wake up calls and I really oh do God. believe that our souls have a way of kind of nudging yeah. us and yep. if not like shaking us very loudly. Oh, to... it was a shake. Yep. Yeah. And, and I don't think we, I always say too, that with wake up calls and people know what I mean. It could be a separation. It could be somebody passing. It could be uh, you getting laid off or a wake up call for you to say, all right. Um, and when that accident happened, I, really, I didn't complain about the accident or I didn't have any car. I was lucky to walk away from it and without a scratch. And some mm -hmm. people say, you know, must have been angels or, in, or the guides, maybe, I, I, you know, I don't, I'm not sure, but I didn't just say, wow, am I lucky? No, I, I really did. I looked up to God and I said, thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. And I never complained about the accident, nope. It was a gift, you saw it really as a I gift. I did, but unfortunately it took that for me to get my together, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what are some ways, you know, we could more, you know, help children cultivate their gifts? Okay. Um, there are some kids, I think a lot of kids are born psychic anyways. And like I said, school, some, you know, you've heard of the indigo children or the, uh, the, you know, the indigo kids that are being born, or I think it's depending what generation you're from. I think kids are born even more and more sensitive right now. And I think let kids be kids. Um, you know, when they said, when you see a pageant, you see them on TV with the pageant mothers. Okay. Yeah. I don't want a parent ever to force their kids to ever show how their psychic ability works. But I tell parents too, you get the education first, you learn how it works with the energy centers and the aura, and then teach your children. Okay. See, I, I'm not sure. Are you a mom, darling? No, I'm not. No, I didn't think, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, you could be young and still have, you know, a kid too. Uh, if someone has a kid who's listening right now and say the kid is like three or four, you know, that kind of age. Um, and they're saying there's people in my room or they're dreaming or something. Maybe they are seeing the grandmother they never knew or a great grandfather. Um, it's good to teach kids to, uh, to turn down their lights. Okay. To turn down, see? So yeah. the energy centers, if you say, okay, um, I'll say, um, okay, baby Emily. Okay. All right. <laughs> Emily, let's, okay you're three, four years old, let's turn down your lights. And then the mother could touch the area and they could see them as flowers closing. It makes it, now you're never really gonna close your energy centers with spiritual batteries, but the, you know, by just by the thought of them closing is gonna make kids less sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, I used to play games with my mom. Little did I know that I was playing psychic games. It was like, she would, I would say, Ma, pick a number one to 10. I mean, something as simple as that, you know, or, um, if the elevator doors were opening as kids, I, when I was younger, I, I had very bad ear infections. Mm -hmm. If we were at a hospital and you have six elevators, a big hospital, um, I would try to, I would stand in front of which one I would try to open. But what kids could do now, say you have two kids and just as this can be, make it fun also, you know, kids are like, kids love crystals now, right? They seem to love crystals. Yeah. So get two amethysts, two quartz, two smokies, two, uh, citrines, whatever the same color one kid sits this way another kid sits behind them doesn't they don't even have to be siblings sits behind you back to back and pick up the crystal and see if the other child behind you can pick up the same one telepathy do you see what i mean so yes. that's a good way um but i advise parents to get an education first because any kids that's sensitive they're going to made because in society right now a lot of kids uh, the word empath is being used right now, isn't it a lot? Empath. It, yeah. well, we all are. Some are more than the others are empaths. Uh, now, you know, they classify them as empaths, extra sensitive. Um, teach them um, that their, their sensitivity is a gift. It is. I didn't have that when I was a kid. I was just called weird, strange, something's wrong with you. Plus, I was skinny as a pole, had big ears that stuck out, glasses and a patch. So not only did I look like that as a kid, right? Uh, and I did get picked on. Um, and my, my parents didn't understand. And when your own family starts pointing at you and say something's wrong with him, of course, what happens? Like, a, you know, like you, you hide the ability or you become, uh, you go into like some, you get, uh, you spend time by yourself. And a lot of kids, you're going to disclose too. Some kids that are sensitive, they love having alone time. They have imaginary friends. 
uh, supposedly imaginary friends. Uh, they're really good at creativity. Um, so there's different ways that they, uh, you know, just take care when it comes to the sensitive child. And there is a book called The Sensitive Child. Doesn't mean they're sensitive and then they're psychic. So you put those two together and it's extra. Sensitive uh, kids, uh, I can't think of the author's name, Emily, right now, but she wrote, high, she wrote the book on highly sensitive people and highly sensitive kids. And yeah. if people look it up, they'll know which one is. Sensitive kids, they don't even like uh, the, the feeling of clothes on their bodies sometimes or mm. the colors. Learn colors also. Okay, Go, yeah. can you give us Learn. like a quick run through of colors? Yeah, uh, uh, yes. Uh, never put a kid in a bright red room, a child, because red is the, if someone is lacking in um, energy, I say bring in red uh, or uh, breathe in the color red. Imagine red is around. Red is the base chakra. Yeah. Think about it. Um, so you must, are you an aunt? Are you, are, do you, do you have siblings yep. that have kids? Okay. Aunt, yeah. So you know when kids have, when kids, the, you know when they call kids the terrible twos, mm -hmm. all right? They're all over the place, right? They're jumping, they're dancing. They're, the base chakra is opening. Okay, it comes, see what I mean? So that's activated. And as they go through life, then comes this, uh, the sacral below the navel, then the, mo the emotions, then the heart. So kids, um, if, if red is um, vibrant and physical, a kid is not gonna come down in a bright red room. It's gonna be very, very active. Yeah. I suggest that they're in uh, blue rooms, uh, light blue. I wouldn't put a child in a banana yellow room either, why? solar plexus it'll make them over emotional you see so learn colors so i'll just give you a quick rundown i yeah. get this in psychic navigator red is physical uh which is the base chakra orange uh, a lot of people are artistic that are orange that's the sacral yellow is the solar plexus very sensitive green is the heart when i see green around people i know that they are healers and or they are being healed and then you go up to the throat center which is sky blue and then indigo, the color indigo, and then violet. So mm -hmm. if people go in those colors, and once you look at colors, you never look at them the same way. I want people to look, notice colors that you're drawn to, everyone. Notice what colors that you're wearing. And a lot of people say, well, I like wearing black. Black is great, but if you have a black car in the sun, and you being in Florida, you understand this, you have a black car in the sun and a white car in the sun, which one's gonna heat up first? The black. The black one, because it attracts light. Yeah. So if you love wearing black and everyone loves black, it's slimy, make sure you wear colorful underclothes, all right? Why? Because this is just, remember, it's just my, uh, it's just an idea, it's just the thought that I have. If, if, if you're wearing black and you're around someone that's going through a depressive, uh, they're going through some type of depression, I think you're going to draw that into yourself with the black. But if you have some color under you, all right, that might reflect it also. And colors are huge. They vibrate to their own frequency. Um, there's lasers now, there's color therapy. And one last thing about colors, any supermarket you go in, what are the two colors that you see a lot? Yellow, yellow. and red. Yellow and red, like McDonald's. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah, okay, yellow makes you sensitive. So if you're in a supermarket, you're gonna see the yellow. Some people don't even realize this. It gives you an emotional response to walk towards it or to catch your eye even. Red makes you physically move to go to it. So next time you're in a supermarket, notice all the colors. That's yeah. so interesting. I think casinos have the same color scheme Absolutely. a lot of times too. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So this is fascinating. So do you see auras as well? Would you see I that? I feel them. I feel yeah. them more. A friend of mine, Laura, she can see them, but I can, I think I can, you know, you, we all have psychic ability, a psychic strength. Uh, clear sentient to feel, to feel things. You walk into a room, you're like, I don't like the feel of this room, or I do. You meet somebody for the first time, you know immediately if you like them or you don't. Yeah. Even though it's your best friend's friend that you've never met, and you're like, oh, hi, how are you? And, and how are you? But inside, you're like, uh, something's not right. Yeah. yeah. So that's that feeling. Um, then there's clear audience to hear. Clear audience is when it's that still small voice. It's that voice that you're about to tell somebody off, but that voice inside you says, do you really want to do that? I heard that from Carolyn Mace once, and it's perfect. Yeah, uh, people, yeah people who are clairaudient, um, they, they hear music playing sometimes out of the blue. They hear a squelch in their ear sometimes. And I always say, make sure it's not a medical condition, tendonitis. Um, and also clairvoyance, to see, where you, where you see things also. So there's three kinds of ability. Figure out which one you are. And then there's clear cognizant, which means 
you just know it, but you don't know it. And it's all four. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you really have a combination of all four of those. I think so. Yeah. And a lot of people, they want to be more clairvoyant than they're clear sentient. If you're a good feeler, go with it. Go with it um, because it's going to, it's just going to expand. If you're asking this, and this is not all about prediction. A lot of people think psychic ability is talking just about prediction. You can use psychic ability, which are gifts of the soul. Okay. Yeah. Um, in your everyday life, in work, uh, relationship with your family. It's not all about predictions. If you're in a business meeting and you're very um, clear sentient to feel, you just got to pause, put your awareness on your, on your soul, your gut, and just say, how do I feel this is going to go? How do I feel this is going to go? And you may get, hmm, you know what? I think it's going to go slow. I need to speak. You might get something. If you're clairvoyant, you're going into the meeting, you put your awareness on your third eye, which is right here, the inner eye. And a lot of people who are clairvoyant and they will see images or, or symbols. You go into this meeting and say, what's going to happen in this meeting? What do I need to be prepared for? You may see a lightning bolt. You may see a flower opening and your symbol is going to mean certain uh, specifically things specifically to you. Someone's symbol is mm -hmm. going to be something different. If you're clairaudient and you go into a meeting, what do, what do I need to know before I go into this meeting? And then you might hear, um, let others speak. Talk about last year's proposal. You see, so you can use your ability. And the same thing with relationships. When you meet somebody for the first time, of course, our heart's like, oh. But if you go to the gut and say, how do I feel? Happened to me, um, all right, just really quickly. Um, uh, I'm constantly traveling, not so much lately because of COVID. Um, I've been traveling for 17 years. Kind of hard to have a relationship. Kind of hard to have someone who's that strong in their own self-esteem to say, go ahead, you go do your job, uh, you know, right? They have to have their own life. Yes. So I, I, don't, I, I don't date a lot, you know, especially now. So I said, okay, you know what, maybe it's time. Well, I met someone. And then from the first dinner, I felt like oh, something's not right. I kept saying it, something's not right. And then uh, I introduced the person to some of my friends and I said, and they were like, wow, that was, that, that, you know, they seem really great. And then I'd say, but something's not right. And I couldn't put my finger on it. It just didn't feel right. And then I said, and I'm, and not, and I'm a psychic medium, but I'm also, I make mistakes. I'm just a man. I kept saying, well, maybe it's been such a long time that I don't, you know, I, I don't trust that. I don't trust that feeling. Sure enough, 10 weeks in, I ended it because that flag after flag after flag was being brought up. And someone said to me, it took you 10 weeks to figure out that out. And I said, well, better than 10, two years, right? Absolutely. Right, there's some people, you're like, no, I want to be in, some people, uh, they want to be in a relationship just to be in one. Uh, that's not me. I'd rather make sure that it's the right person. I, you know, make sure there's a me before there's a we. You get it? Yes, yeah. John, I'm so glad you brought this up because this is actually a question that we received. And so saying that you're not as in touch with your inner guidance and you're sure. kind of, you're doubting yourself. You maybe been hurt in a relationship before. So you're not sure if it's like you're picking up on that person or it's just, you know, your guidance that feels a little bit off or yeah. second guessing. What right. would you recommend? Okay, so your question is, um rephrase it for me yep you meet somebody you feel like they have great qualities but you're not really sure if they're the one because you kind of have a hard time trusting your own intuition right hmm. okay um hmm. like me at that time yeah um uh you, they should be getting signs so like you know what you know I think in relationships, in the beginning, they should be exciting, right? They should be fun. They should be like, you know, and I understand that. And I, I knew someone that met someone and they were only into the relationship a month. And I heard, well, we're working through things. It just started. I mean, it just <laughs> started. What are you working through? What do you mean? Oh, we're trying to work through things. Okay, I understand that part too, right? But um, I would just, um, if they just meet someone and you say they're not in touch, it's okay uh, to, to go into a space, you get quiet and say, all right, go, go to your own soul first. And you're thinking, well, how do I know it's not me talking or it's my imagination or it's my soul? Ask yourself, intuitive information, information from the soul, ask yourself this, is this coming to me or from me? 
Is this coming to me or from me? And from you seems to be outside, but uh, to you, it feels like it's inside the body. And their body, trust your body, guys. It will never, ever lie. I should have known something was wrong with that relationship. I mean, it wasn't going to work because at the very first dinner, all right, you know, um, when you're meeting someone for the first time, right? Like I'm meeting you, I'm looking into your eyes. This person was looking over my shoulder to my left, not even in my eyes. And I'm like, what are you look? I'm like, what are you looking at? You know, they weren't even looking at me when they were talking. Right there should have been. So I just say, get quiet and just say, you know, really try to just tap in to the how you're feeling at the moment every time. It should be, it should be a peaceful one if, it's, if the relationship is going uh, fine. But you don't have to take huge amounts of study um, to be intuitive. You already are. So acknowledge that I am an intuitive, not someone who is a transcendent master or someone who just uh, meditates you know, for 10 years, we, we all are. You just have to remember, your intuition is trying to constantly get your attention, but we don't listen to it. We don't listen to it. So I want to go back to your personal story because I feel okay. like so parts of this is like stripping the layers of distraction or accumulation that we have gathered to, to tune out our own inner knowing, yeah. right? Or protect, or to protect ourselves to protect ourselves. That's a great, or we've ignored our intuition for so right. long, so it's yeah. hard to, you know, rely on it. But take me back to your life and you had that sort of wake up call. Were you already on that path or did you literally say, now I'm going to devote my yeah. life to this? Um, as a kid, I was very, very sensitive. I was a colicky baby. I came out of my mother practically crying um, and I just cried a lot. And I think I drove the, my, my mom very patient, you know, my dad, um, not so much. I, I think that I was overstimulated by what was around me, you know, and uh, the ability that I have, I never say, I use the word gift, Emily, sometimes, because I heard this once from John Edwin. I always give credit where credit is due or where I heard something. He says he doesn't like to call it a gift because it, by saying that it means he has something that other people don't. And we all do. So that's why you'll hear me say that uh, I, I always try to go back to the ability. It was always there, all right? It was always there. But when I was made to feel weird or something's wrong with you, I just hit it. I just didn't do it. Things used to just come out of my mouth as a kid. I knew who was going to be sick or if the phone was going to ring or if someone was just going to show up. Um, I, was just, I, I, was, I just could do it. Um, and then as I got older, my teenage friends knew that I was into this I always was fascinated by the subject. I never went away from it. I would study it, but back then, not a lot of psychic books really, yeah? yeah. So um, then when I went to LA, um, I started getting into uh, you know, work and you know, I was only 24 years old, all right, when I went to LA. And so I started getting into you know, work, becoming a young man, and it was always there. I was always fascinated by it, but I just put it on hold. The accident, was my way of uh, um, just coming back to it, realizing there was a building. My soul was trying to steer me uh, in the same direction. If I fall, if I had a mentor back then of saying, well, now these abilities, John, let's, let's see where these are going. I might've been on that path. Um, and, not, and I had many office jobs, okay, many offers. I might've just went to that spiritual path right away. But I believe this too. I think when you're born, you have point A, and you're going to go to a point B. And you know some people that, like a kid will be born, I'm going to be a doctor. And damn it, they are. Through their whole life, they, I'm, I'm going to be a fireman, I'm going to be a cop, I'm going to be a mom. And that's what they do. Other people meander. And different roads come in and steer you here. And, and different people come into your life. But different people kept coming into my life, putting me back on track, which led me to LA, which led me to the right people, uh, to, to the accident. And I've always had, and I studied Reiki also, and I, went, I met a wonderful mentor who's now passed away, Vincent Barra, Vincent J. Barra. He was a psychic, and he was on the radio in L.A., and I was fascinated by uh, listening to him. And the accident just made me go back to the studies, and, and, and I started using cards also. I started using a deck of cards, and, and that whole thing took off too, yeah. 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 So do you believe our souls have like a very distinct pur purpose to come into this lifetime that we're going to accomplish? And do you, and how often do we accomplish that? I think, um, I think, I think uh, it's funny because, uh, you know, in the book, Power of the Soul too, it's, um, I think we do come back here. 
uh, with a purpose. And oftentimes we don't remember what that purpose is, right? But people say to me, when I had my radio station, uh, radio show for four years with Hey Health Radio, uh, my publisher's radio station, people would call and say, what's my purpose? And I'd be like, damn, how much time do you have? Okay. <laughs> but I think our sole purpose, all of us, is to be all that you can be, a divine being from God, the source, you know, whatever, you know, you want to call it. Um, being a, uh, using, uh, we're all divine beings, using your gifts, talents, and abilities to help others. Okay. My ability as a medium um, is not my purpose. Your purpose is to be all you can be, to use yeah. your gifts, talents, ability to help others. Mm -hmm. My purpose is not to be a medium. Your purpose is not to be uh, an interviewer. Uh, it's your ability to do that to help others. Do you see? So our yeah. purpose is, to, I think that we are really, really here to all be with each other all right, and to help each other. And, you know, well, it's, it's, it's when I see things that are happening now in the news, it just, it just, it overwhelms me sometimes. So I have to be really, uh, have some boundaries when I watch the news or even the people that you let ar uh, around you. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. So, I mean, and, and I've heard you say like part of the, you know, with being sensitive comes being sensitive, right? You can't turn that, that part off. Like we need to, and we're meant to be sensitive beings. Right. Yeah, you can control it though too. Um, you're talking about when when the when people uh, who want to be mediums, all right, uh, and they just want to do it in a weekend. You can't be a, a, a you can't be a service to others. And to be a medium is a life of service. Um, I never set out to do this work. I really didn't. Um, I was always psychic. I, I mean, or I was aware of my abilities. Then the accident made them even stronger. Then mediumship started happening. Um, and so when I train people. Um, for that, we all have the potential. Some can get it easier. Some have to work at it. I always, and some people like they're crying because they're sensitive beings and they're like, oh my God, I, I'm, I'm too sensitive. I'm like, no, the price of sensitivity is sensitivity. You want to do this work. The reason why people who do this work is because you are a sensitive. And so when they, when you're training your sensitivity, it's going to lead to more sensitivity. So for the people who go into this kind of work, you got to realize that too. You got to get grounded with it. There's ways to stay grounded with your sensitivity and have boundaries, what you eat, who you, who you let, uh, you know, into your life. So yeah, it's not that easy. It really isn't. And we're meant to be sensitive creatures. Yeah. And here's something that explains really quickly. Um, there's three kinds of psychics, right? And um, there's somebody who walk, who, they walk into a mall or big crowds and they don't feel comfortable at all. They don't know why. They're just like crowds bother me. I, I can't be close to people. And um, they are an untrained psychic. They don't even know. They might not even understand the word psychic, not even thought about sensitivity as being psychic or intuitive. The second kind of person is someone who they know the word. They maybe read a book or they saw a psychic. So they're somewhat aware. The third person is the master. The master is someone who knows about the energy centers, knows about meditation, the aura, uh, you know, using the breath. They, they learn the mechanics of how their psychic ability works. So they become the master of their ability. It does not become the master of them. Get it? Yes. So when people say, I see dead people, I don't see dead people in, in restaurants or like they show on television, you know, and <laughs> I was teaching a weekend at a uh, hotel and one student said to me, Oh my God, there's so many people in this hotel that I didn't sleep all night, untrained. You should not, it, it should not control you. You have to control it. Be the master of your abilities so it doesn't uh, master you. Yeah. John, one thing I want to ask you about, I noticed this right away. I'm very sensitive to people's energy. And I noticed right when we hopped on the call, I was in an elevated state. Like, you know, you had that effect on my energy because I noticed that your personal vibration is very, very high. And I've heard you talk about this. I know before. people that are higher. That even bothers <laughs> me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, and I've heard you talk about this is that that's important for you and your abilities to connect with the other side because sure. they're matching, like they're maybe lowering their vibration and you're raising yours or you're keeping your vibration really high so that you're able to um, connect in that way, right? Um, right? Yeah, how important is it, you know, in order to really activate our gifts to raise our personal vibration? Yes. Um... 
I look at it as, um, and you want, you want to raise your vibration anyways, too, because when I, and it's funny, when I was in uh, England studying to be a medium, that was a, my soul led me there, too. Synchronistic events. First of all, too, there's four ways that your soul tries to get your attention. It'll try through the dreams. And someone says, but I don't dream. Yes, you do. Well, your head would pop off. You do dream. You can program yourself to remember them. The second one is intuition. Intuition is that whether you hear, feel, or see saying you go this way. Yeah, no, no, no. You don't notice it. You don't pay attention to it. Then that doesn't work. Synchronistic event, being at the right place at the right time. Your soul will try to place you. And then when that doesn't work, wake up calls like my accident. Now, did my soul cause that accident? No. Okay. But I didn't listen. If I followed what my soul was trying to show me, I never would have probably been in that accident, okay? Uh, but I think uh, when it comes to uh, you know, raising your own vibration, you should always be bringing in chi anyways or bringing in prana. So the people that do, um, uh, they do qigong, yoga, uh, any kind of thing where you bring in an energy, pranayama with just the breath, you're bringing in that life force, which is going to make not only your, your physical self stronger, but it's going to also uh, strengthen your, your spiritual strength. And there's a wonderful uh, teacher. I met her at uh, Celebrate Your Life in Arizona, Sue Mortner. She's yes. a healer. She, you know her work, Sue? Yes. yes. I said to her once, all these people who say, how do I protect my aura from, from things? Okay, you know, she said, when this is in, when this is in alignment, you don't have to worry about this because it's here and then out. So people should focus on the energy centers in their aura. And um, because we're spiritual beings and physical beings. Uh, a gentleman asked me once, why would I even want to be study the spiritual and be all sensitive with all that? I said, don't you realize you're a physical being and a spiritual being? To, li to only live half of that is to live a life half lived. Honor both of them. And it's okay to put this stuff away once in a while. Okay, spirit, spirit, <laughs> psychic, psychic, soul, soul, workshop, workshop. Go walk your dog. Go to the beach. <laughs> Be human. Walk in the woods, too. And you've got an amazing yellow all around you, too, darling. Okay, you do. So that is that sensitivity. And you got to be careful when it comes to sensitivity. It's the gut. People with sensitivity like that, can, it's, uh, if you're not aware of it, a lot of people who are clear sentient have stomach issues. Yeah. Say, yeah. And I have diverticulitis. I have diverticulosis, which is, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a stomach thing um, because of oversensitivity, not just because of psychic work. I was raised in an alcoholic home. All right, so there was a lot of drama there. So, you know, life did that too. But you've got a lot of yellow around you, which is that emotional stuff too. But you seem grounded with it. So, you know what I mean? And I think you know what triggers you or yeah. who triggers you or who triggers you. Now, you said I have high energy. I have, um, but I always, people find it comfortable, okay? When it comes to me, um, that it should be like the infinity sign. Give and take. Yes. Give and take. Because you've had people talk at you. Yeah? You've had oh, yeah. people talk at you and you're like this, right? You get blown away. It doesn't mean they're bad people, but this should be, same thing with relationships, should be a give Thanks. and take. You understand? So I give people a chance to, I have a habit of uh, jumping ahead though, uh, you know, finishing other people's <laughs> sentences too though. So yeah, but you, got, you got amazing uh, yellow. You know what I see with you too, even though, you know, I don't read for anyone just, but sometimes if it's there, um, you might be into these, you might not be. I don't see any pictures or anything. Do you like sunflowers or? Yes. <laughs> I just did a photo shoot yesterday with sunflowers. They're all around you. And sunflowers mean to me, if I'm getting it this way, psychic, mm -hmm. it means to me, you like sunflowers, okay? Um, when I get it mediumistically, so psychic happens in front of me, mediumship happens on the side. Psych, I'm from your aura, I'm on a psychic link. I don't have a, a relative telling me this, but if they were giving me the sunflower, I'd say, do you know the song, You Are My Sunshine, My Only Sunshine, You Make Me Happy? Grandmothers sang it to their kids, mothers sing this to the kids, or you know, or someone in your family's name is called Sunny. Yeah. yeah. See, so that's so. like a symbolic way of communicating and also validation to s let people know that they're communicating with loved ones exactly. on the other so, side. Uh, a psychic's getting the energy from you, your aura, your past, your present, your potential future. I don't think the future is set in stone. They're getting it from your aura. Mediumship is not from you. I, I use you as a connection, then I'm leaving you and I'm going to them. So I'm getting information from the other side. So psychics perceive, 
mediums receive. And you're then pretty regulated in terms of like when you turn those gifts on, when you're connecting. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. Um, I don't walk up to people. It takes a very, very strong spirit for me. If I, I, I just wouldn't. I would not walk up somebody in a supermarket and say, did you lose a child? First of all, you don't know what faith they follow. Two, you're going to freak them right the hell out. All right? And then they'd be like, who are you? And then, you know, I wouldn't do that. If it's meant to be, right? And I said this to my students, just because you're getting somebody from the other side doesn't mean you walk up to someone. Let them figure it out on the other side, how it's going to happen. Let them freak. Because it happened at a party once. I was with a friend, Simon. He was into, he's in, uh, worked for uh, IT. And I went to a business party with him. And I said, Simon. That guy that just walked in, his brother's, his, he must have had a brother that passed because he's right with him. Now, I didn't see it like the movies, but in my mind, I just felt the other brother. He goes, you're not going to say something, are you? I said, no. I just put it out to the brother in my mind. And I said, hey, you want me to go to your brother? You figure out how we're going to meet at this party. It never happened. See? So they yeah. trust that. They know how to put you at the right place at the right time. What are some other ways that, you know, loved ones, souls from the other side will communicate with us? After death communications, ADCs. It's, um, you don't need a medium for that. It's the signs that they send you. Um, it's the penny you found on your bed uh, that you just made, the shiny penny or the dimes. It's the smell of your grandmother's cologne that you keep thinking is a flower bush out your window. Um, it's, uh, you're thinking of your mom and you turn on the radio, there's her favorite song. Um, you're thinking of your dad and you're thinking of him while you're driving and you see a license, say your dad's name is Leroy, and then you see Leroy's plumbing go right by you, and you're like this, but where, and were, were you raised in Massachusetts since a kid, did you say? I mean, I, for a lot of my childhood. Okay, so you know the accent that I yeah. have that you don't anymore, apparently. Um, what happens is uh, they see, they're thinking of their dad, Leroy, and then you, they see Leroy's plumbing, and we do this, how weird. <laughs> how weird, how freaky is that? Oh my God, what a coincidence. No, they know what they're doing. Um, hummingbirds are big, cardinals are big, butterflies are big, so, um, uh, signs in nature are big. They're called after death communication by a, uh, a, a married couple, they're not married anymore, but uh, it's called Hello from Heaven. Uh, Bill and Judy Guggenheim, they came up with those words, uh, ADCs, and they interviewed 3,000 people and they realized that these people had different parts of the globe were having the same experience, but you don't need a medium. And they are trying to get your attention all the time. But like the Leroy's plumbing, we explain it away too many times. We explain it away. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I wanted to ask you more about, you know, why souls will want to communicate with us. Because they can they can. I mean, a lot of people think that, um, aren't we calling them? Uh, I don't call them. I wish I could call them. I'd call my mother. I'd call Elvis. I would call Princess Diana. Um, I can't call the dead. It's, you know, it's not like one 800 dollar daddy All right. It's, um, it doesn't work that way. They come because they know that I, uh, that I have this ability that, or that I'm a beacon. Um, but, um, they, uh, they we're not, we're not, and some are like, aren't we bothering them? No. Basically, if they see someone, if your parent was alive and who's now passed away and you're going through something here, if they were alive, they'd be there for you. Just because they left the body doesn't mean they're not going to be there for you. So you have a spirit family here. I mean, you got family here, but you also have your loved ones on the other side. But you can't call on your loved one. Um, I know some people, when they go into uh, casinos, they're calling their mother, help me win, ma, help me win. Some <laughs> people be like, no, I know it works. Um, they cannot interfere with the karmic lessons that you're meant to learn here. Um, because um, they, one woman said to me once, um, she said, John, can my father help me with finances um, who passed away? And I said, well, how was he with money here? And she said, he was awful. And I said, he still is. Just because he passes away doesn't make him account. Like he has this uh, all knowing, you know, uh, financial education. And two sisters came to see me once and one of them, uh, at the end of the reading, she, she gave a heavy sigh. I said, well, you're not happy, darling, with that reading. She said, no, I know it was my mother. It was great. She said, but my mother never told me in the reading, should I divorce my husband? 
that's not her dead mother's job to tell her she should divorce her husband. You know what I mean? It's someone like, well, if she was here, maybe the mother was. No, you, there's some choices that they have to leave to us. They can be with you at certain times, guide you to be at the right place at the right time, or inspire you, but they cannot take away uh, the lessons. But they basically cannot come to us to let us know, I'm still alive. I'm still here. Stop grieving. I am here. Live your life. You're the one that is here. Yeah. So, John, we have karmic lessons that we come into lifetimes to learn. And then when we transition, you know, do we evolve in that or do we I sort of. I hope so. <laughs> I really, really do. But I think if you don't get the lesson, um, you're going to do it again. I, uh, you have to. I think there is. And a lot of people try to put logic to it. You're going to hear a lot of people say what they think of believe. There it is. Unless you uh, pass away like Anita Mojani, okay, or anyone that's had a near-death experience, they've gone over there. I don't want to have to die to find out what it's like and find some answers. But, but they do say for the people, uh, uh, that's Raymond Moody's work, near-death experience, people that have, they had to resuscitate to come back, they come back and all of a sudden they've changed. They understand more. They may not remember all of it, but they know their whole view in life has changed. And many of these people, and I know a few, their life has never been the same, but always in a positive way. They let go of uh, hate. They let go of uh, material wanting, wanting, wanting. So it's amazing when they come back. Uh, but yeah, so thank you. That's a great question. Yeah, oh, fascinating. So I want to ask you about soul family because you're so great at cultivating, you know, friends and such a rich community you know right. and i think that's one of the things if you really are on a spiritual path like you may not especially in childhood and growing up feel like the awkward one the one that doesn't fit in and right. yeah so what what advice do you have um for really cultivating and connecting on that well level? you want all kinds of people in your life too though um i have my friends that i bond with um I, you can call them your soul tribe if you want okay um but if you're studying spirituality, and does, you, you can never really take a workshop to be spiritual. You already are, okay? But um, I think being spiritual is how you treat yourself, how you treat others, how you treat the earth, the kindness. You, that's being spiritual, all right? But I think that uh, there's some people you're going to resonate with, and more people get more into, uh, and first of all, you said there was an explosion in the 21st century. It, you know what it is? People aren't getting the answers anymore on the outside. They're not. They're not getting the answers. Um, even like a, uh, say a rock star has, you know, multi-million dollar year, thousands of, I mean, has a ton of records and um, records showing my age. Um, they, uh, they have um, everything that they want financially. They have the house, the car, uh, the relationship, the, everything, but something is still missing in them. There's a hole and that is, your soul that your soul wants you to fill it with uh, new information to you know to uh, to experience things on a soul level. So when it comes to spiritual stuff and spiritual tribe, when you start getting more into the soul into spirit, you're gonna like attracts like. What you put out, you attract. Attract. But I would never want to be with another one of me. Okay, no, I wouldn't want to be with the, you know no in England. You, it, husband and wives, they'd be a medium and then the, uh, the spouse would be the healer. It's very rare where I see two mediums together. I know it does happen, uh, but I wouldn't want another one of me. I like people in my relationship, uh, like my last one I had for 13 years, that grounds me. That grounds me, right? And we both learn from each other, yeah? So if, you have, if you're going the spiritual route and your consciousness is getting higher, somebody may, you're vibrating here, or your consciousness is here, somebody may be here. And it doesn't mean for you to be a spiritual snob, okay? It just means that they're here. And I believe everyone is exactly where they're supposed to be. If you're here, then that's great because this person in your life is going to ground you. Do you understand? Yeah. And you're going to uplift that other person. It should be, what did I say earlier? Symbiotic, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So what happened with me is people just started coming into, into my life and I know who I resonate with. I know who's real. Okay. You can talk spiritual unless you're living it. I don't care. You can read, you can talk the words about spirituality, but you're just talking the words. 
You have to live it. How are you treating others? Are you giving back? Um, are you paying it forward? Um, are, are you learning to receive? Many people have a, no problem uh, receiving. I mean, giving. Some people have a hard time receiving. So yeah, so, and the more you keep your thoughts, you know, in alignment, and I am a Hay House author, um, you know, so Empower the Soul, like the book you showed me earlier that I wrote, yeah. too. what you put out, you attract. And here's a very important thing, and I talk about this with my community, my, uh, my new venture. Um, you could do all the spiritual work you want, read all the cards, get the decks, study all the DVDs, read the books, but... And it's because you want to enhance your life. You want a spiritual practice going to help you now, okay? But if your thought is something, okay, you know when you're watching the news, especially lately, right? Yeah. You see the ticker tape on the bottom that's running? That is like your psychological slavery. That is the negative, t negative stuff in your brain that has to be worked on. And it could come from childhood. It could have been from the way you were raised. It could be from, from uh, the community you were brought up in. Um, if you're hearing... Or if, you're, uh, if you believe, you haven't worked on that, I'm not worthy. Who do I think I am? I'm fat. I'm no good. Um, I had a friend of mine. Uh, she, beautiful woman, always giving. Uh, but she just not having the, she didn't have a good run of luck, bless her, right? And she said to me once, everything she called, she would call me and everything would be negative, negative, negative. Every time you talk to somebody and they're dumping that, you're enabling them, okay? Mm -hmm. You can only help them for so long then say, you know what, this isn't working anymore. So I said, you need to think more positive. She goes, yeah, yeah, I bought the cards. I have the angel cards. I've read the books. And she says, you know what, John, people, people suck at everyone's out to get something. And I went, wow, 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 wow. Now, I don't care how many cards that person reads. I don't care how many movies they see that are spiritual or decks that they have. If that underlying thought is going, which, which, what do you think is going to happen? You're not going to get this. Yeah? Yeah, See? I totally agree with you. And I think a lot of the spiritual journey or our own evolution is uh, the healing journey that we're all on. So right. what are some things that you would recommend to maybe like release some of those limiting beliefs? See where it's coming from too, though, okay? Um, you have to, we were all raised with... Um, Many of us were raised, now you're a baby, so maybe you, not you, but some of us were raised with um, the rich get rich, the poor get poorer. Everyone is out, uh, nice guys finish last. Money doesn't grow on trees. Um, life isn't meant to be easy. Um, all of those, okay? We were raised with those. Um, who do you think you are? Uh, life sucks and then you die. That was a great one. For, that, that, was a, that was a bumper sticker, coffee cups. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Life sucks and then you die. And then you think some people believe that. So learn what's coming out of you. You have to work on where is this coming from? Where is this coming from? All right. Is it past conditioning? You have to replace it. It's, it's a, and this is the work that people, uh, they, want it, they want instant spirituality. Okay, it's work, guys. That's why we're here. This is why, and I know have, being a soul in human form is not the easiest thing. You have a high vibrational essence that's coming into a dense molecular physical frame. So it's kind of, you know, so right away we all deserve uh, an award just for being here, I think. So you've got to reprogram, um, like Louise Hay used to say, uh, you know, I am worthy, I am loved. Some people, they don't even think they're ever going to meet somebody because. I'm too fat. Um, I will never. I, what words are you saying? Think of the words. Words are powerful. They can transform. They can heal, but they can also hurt you. We do it to ourselves. Focus on the words that you and, and watch your thoughts. Watch your thoughts when you put out. If you see somebody too, we've all experienced this. You see somebody who has some something, you're like, wow. You might be a little envious. You might be a little jealous. Instead of saying that, say this. I heard this from Terry Cole Whitaker, a speaker from way before my time. She, and I met her and she said, when she sees something great for happen to somebody, she says this, that's for me. That's for me. Because what that. she's saying is she's blessing them and then she's you know, trying to manifest it for herself. That's for me. Remember that too. And if you're going to a party or to a place, you have this thing about meeting people, wherever I go, there'll be friends there. 
wherever they go, there'll be friends there. From the, here's another one, Louise Hay. From this experience, only good will come from it, all is well. That has helped me so much. You know, when sh stuff happens um, <laughs> and you're like, damn, and you're like, okay, from this experience, only good will come from it, all is well. But you can't just, you just can't say it. You have to believe it. Do you understand? You have to believe it. And what we make, you could sit there too. Um, you could sit on a couch all day and say, the perfect relationship is coming to me now. The you got to get off the couch, though. <laughs> you got to get off the couch, people. I mean, yes, affirming is great, changing the thought, but you, you got to meet the universe halfway. What's the person going to do? Walk through your wall if you never go out? Meet them halfway. Take a class. Take a cooking class. N not everyone has to do internet dating, all right? Take a class when we're COVID, you know, when COVID, you know, subsides, all right? Um, or, even, you know, try something new, um, a meditation class. Or if it's going to be online, try something, uh, a yoga class online where you see the teacher or other students, uh, you know, expand it a little also. So, yeah, I mean, I can have fun with you, but that, you know, with that, but you have to, you can't just say uh, a relationship's coming to me. You have to believe it. You have to feel like you're worthy of it, um, which you are. We're all worthy of love. And love is not just a, uh, uh, an emotion. It's energy. Mm. It's an energy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And it's, it's working on that. And if you want to manifest something, we do the affirmations. Um, we, we work on that. Um, you, you need to bring in the emotion of it. If you're selling a house in your mind's eye, I want you to see a for sale sign in front of your house. So the people who say, I can't sell my house, I can't sell my house, and you being from New England, you know this, first you say, did you bury St. Joseph in the front yard? I don't know if you've ever heard of that. <laughs> Take the statue? No? Okay. So he's a, you know, he's a carpenter, Jesus' dad, but it's, a, it's, a, it's something that some people do, especially the Italians. Um, but you, uh, you want to sell your house. Stop saying this house will never sell. You just affirmed what's going to happen. Right. This house, when you're putting, your thought creates energy, which goes out into the your aura, which goes out into the universe, all right? It's a quantum physics thing. It's science. So if you're going to sell your house or a relationship, whatever, you're selling your house, see it, the for sale sign sold, and see yourself in your mind's eye celebrating the joy and emotion that you just sold your house. Because when you get the, when you see it and you feel it and you believe it, it can happen. But most people just do the affirmation, but they don't bring in the emotion. You have to believe it. So it, does, it is work, but notice your thoughts a lot too. And that's the best thing that happened. So you, this all started because you said the people that are around you. I had to believe that you know I am worthy of friends, that uh, I'm a good person. And, and you're going to resonate. And there's going to be some people that surprise you. Some will come if you're studying spirituality or some people are going to be attracted to you. And other people are going to fall away from your life. And yeah. it doesn't mean uh, that you're more ascended than them. They're going to find their own path. You're not resonating anymore at the same yeah. time. Yeah. And I have friends to him that um, they know what I do. They don't care. I'm not, not just spiritual friends. Okay. I've got, but then I got friends that aren't into everything I am. And I love those people, the people that I walk my dog with, the people where I used to live in my own neighborhood. I'm just John. <laughs> they don't say, is anybody with me? Can you tell me about my future? They don't give a hell. They don't. They're treating me as a guy, as a man, as a, as John, not John the medium. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's so many good, you know, nuggets of advice. And I do believe that matching with the energy is so important. And I noticed that in myself is like, if I am feeling like a little bit down or something like getting myself in an excited state if there's something that I want to focus on or manifest or visualize right. because and we're all connected too if you're feeling down out of the blue and you seem like a bubbly kind of you know a little spry little thing you see okay if you're feeling down for no reason you have to ask yourself this okay too are these really your thoughts is this really your feeling um not what is wrong with me what is wrong with me yes I'm not taking away from a medical thing or if someone who's on medication, but if you're an upbeat person, um, we all go like this, but if all of a sudden you're depressed and you don't know why, instead of saying what's wrong with me, say who is wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And then by just saying who is wrong, who is this? You might get, you might think of your brother or sister, call them and don't be surprised that they're like, oh my God, I just had something happen to, 
You see, because we're all connected on a soul level. Yeah. Love that. John, I want to hear about your community. Where can people find you, connect oh. with you? Well, I, saw, I, I started this a while ago. I, I've been traveling for 17 years, all right? I love it. Um, a lot of people like, you get to see the world. Um, I see a lot of airports, hotel rooms, and conference rooms, okay? Um, and I've been doing it for 17 years. And as I get a little older, not old, I'll say older, um, I want to be home more, all right? My house, and my dog's getting older, right? And I'm huge into dogs. Um, and I kept saying, I just want to, I want to be home more. And then somebody, you know, with COVID happening, I'm like, people are like, well, you asked for this. I'm like, I didn't ask for this. You understand? They're like, well, you, I'm like, I didn't make, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause the virus to go, I mean, uh, affected the world. It's like, uh, so I said, what can I do? And I saw some people, they has, you know, uh, I want a community where like-minded people, uh, and even if they're not like people that are interested in, in spirituality or learn a spiritual practice to help them in their lives. Now I said, I want to put together something. Where can I go besides building a physical school? All right. I didn't want to do a brick and mortar. And I said, you know what? I really should do some type of community online. So that's why I started my soul community. Right. Uh, and it's 25 years of uh, a lot of what I taught. And I said, it really started like this. Every webinar that I did, a lot of people attended, and I would always keep it cheap, right? And uh, under like 20 bucks. And people would be like, when's your next one? When's your next one? When's your next one? I said, you know what? Why don't I do a year-long program? So that's how it started. It started with, and it's, uh, it's basically, a, a lot of it's from my, as, as from uh, Power of the Soul. But now you have me, uh, it's 12 lessons, one lesson a month, 12 live calls, six guests, four group readings, a fa private Facebook uh, um, for us, um, pop-up readings, special guests. I wanted one place where people can go where I can stay here and I'm gonna devote a lot of time and energy, I already have, into this. Let me show people the 25 years. Um, they don't have to get on a plane to do it. I don't have to get on the plane. So yeah, so my soul community, it takes off, takes off October 15th. So uh, we'll see. And I think it's a perfect time now because a lot of people are reaching out looking looking and yes the, the my community too it's reaching out but i'm taking you back in so like the book power of the soul inside wisdom for an outside world yeah so thank Love you it. so my soul yeah. community my soul community .com. that sounds yeah. awesome i'm definitely going to check that out it sounds like a lot of fun and so thank you yeah We'll head over that way. And um, John, just last question for you. What else is on the radar for you that is really setting your soul on fire? Well, the, this community is setting my soul on fire. I'm, I'm really, I think if you're passionate about something, know this. If you're dreading doing something, it's not soul. Okay. And I understand you got to pay the bills. I understand that. Um, but when you're passionate about something, that's your soul's way of saying, yeah. This is for me. This is for me. This is for me. And um, always remember, you're a soul that comes with the body, not a body that comes with the soul. You're a soul that comes with the body, not a body that comes with the soul. You're a soul long before you incarnated in this world. You're going to be a soul long after that. So uh, watch the signs from your, for, from your soul that they're trying to get your attention. And I mean, it is work. If, if people are willing to work on themselves here, and it's going to be reflected on the outside, which I call soul shine, when someone's just beaming. And you cannot, one last thing, you can't force this subject on anybody, Emily. You can't say, well, John Holland said, or Emily said, and here, and the person's, and you might get, and if you have a husband or a spouse or a wife, and you're into this, and they're not, like I said, it's okay. I love the spouses. Uh, I, I will, uh, a lot of my workshops, I'll say, and they, a lot of people come by themselves, but they meet people there. And I'll say, how many of you have the spouse that thinks this is all nonsense? Of course, some hands go up. And I'll say, how many of you have the spouse that says this? You know what? As long as she's happy. That's the kind of partner I like. They love you. They support <laughs> you. They may not understand it, but you can't force this on somebody. Uh, everyone's exactly where they're supposed to be. If you start, if you start doing some work, and you're beaming or something's working and somebody looks at you and says, wow, what are you doing that's working? Then I think it's okay to share. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. But you keep doing what you're doing, my little sunflower. All right, <laughs> you keep doing that. Cause uh, I, I know this is the kind of conversations that we could keep talking 
and talking. Yes, and you have talking, to come but, back on the show. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to do a lot on the on the live calls because I think people want to be heard and we're all going to get to meet each other and help each other as a community because I think we, we're all searching the community and you don't have to be alone. And in the video that I did, I said that uh, one last thing. I said, um, it is said that when you follow a spiritual path, it's one that you walk alone. In a sense, this is true. But here you have a community that's going to help walk with you. Yeah. So, Emily, I think you're great. So thank you, darling. And, you know, good luck with everything that you're doing in the soul work and your podcast. So keep doing it. Shine, girl. Shine. <laughs> thank you, John. Thank you yeah. so much. This has been amazing.